The Cathal Rift was a densely packed maze of nebula that sheltered at its center the remainders of an ancient Cathal civilization. Traveling through the rift was known to cause hallucinations, those that were amplified in the minds of the Force Sensitive. Many lost their way within its recesses, trapped between birthing stars and apparent illusions. But even a place such as this harbors life. And for the ang monks, the Cathal Rift was home. A secretive alien species that stood about two meters in height, the ang hardly ever left their home planet. Though those who did were documented to be uniformly Force-sensitive. The ang also held a deep hatred for slavery, often appearing to the aid of victimized planets and ships. Traveling in groups of three or five, the ang destroyed any slaver clan reckless enough to journey into the Cathal Rift. The ang perspective on the Force differed from that of the Jedi or the Sith. In their eyes, the Force was sacred, a divine gift from their deities those who dwell beyond the veil, and only to be used with utmost purpose. Even still, the monks did make occasional use of the Force, mostly to fuel their enormous ships. Using the energy field of the Force, the monks were able to instantaneously transport objects, ranging in size from small items to 300 meter long ships. To them, distance did not matter as it was only just another aspect of the Force. The ang believed that while life was not predetermined, everything was guided. Thus, they were able to teach even non-Force sensitives to manipulate time and space. The ang were also known to possess the ability of flow walking, a Force power in which a skilled user could surrender their emotions to the Force and place themselves at the center of its flow, thus transcending even time itself. The monks could therefore observe the events of the future or past. Here, by introducing their emotional selves back into the process, the ang could even alter the fabric of time. Very little is known of the ang early history, and for centuries, their existence was only known to a select few who had seen them in the flesh. Even still, their influence on the space surrounding the Cathal Rift has not gone unnoticed. During the height of the Galactic Empire, an Imperial Moth named Kentor Sarn was given control of the Cathal Sector. A former captain of the Imperial Surveillance Corps, Sarn ventured into the rift. But when a navigational malfunction caused the ship to crash on one of the Sector's many unknown planets, Sarn found himself utterly alone, his entire crew dead. Wandering away from his ship, Sarn stumbled into the lair of the Dark Strider, a 15 meter tall insectoid that was created in the ancient Cathal era to protect the remains of its civilization. The creature had guarded the life well for millennia, using its powers as a living supercomputer to do so. But after thousands of years, the Dark Strider yearned to leave its post, and Sarn's arrival provided it with the perfect opportunity. The two struck a deal whereby the Dark Strider would provide Sarn with the blueprints behind its abilities, while Sarn would give the creature a single hyperdrive-equipped ship, thus allowing it to escape into unknown space. They parted ways, and Sarn was eventually rescued and returned to Coruscant. Years passed, and only after the Empire's fragmentation did Sarn return. Taking refuge in the Dark Strider's massive fortress, Sarn planned to use the launch gates of the ancient Cathal to retake the galaxy. The New Republic's response was to send the Far Star, a ship equipped to traverse the Cathal Rift and hunt down the rogue moth. 
Little did they know that the ship's navigator, a human named Makej, was in actuality a reprogrammed Aang Chi being. One that had years before been kidnapped and subconsciously taught to locate and retrieve the Codex. A pyramidal construct of the Dark Strider that the Aang Chi believed could grant them the ability to contact their gods. So when the Far Star was ambushed by Saren's forces, the Aang Chi intervened. Saren's plans for galactic domination were summarily cut short during the Battle of the Cathal System, where the Far Star was destroyed, plummeting to the surface and destroying the Dark Strider's forces. After millennia of constant duty, the ancient creature was buried alive. With Saren dead, the Imperial forces quickly fell, and the Aang Chi, codex in hand, retreated back into seclusion. Some time before the Battle of Yavin, the Jedi Master Yoda sent George Cardass, a former smuggler whose health was deteriorating, to the Aang Chi monks so that he could be healed. The Aang Chi agreed, although only on the condition that he spend his life learning their ways. Although Cardass was not Force-sensitive, he was able to learn to manipulate the Force. Eventually, he was allowed to leave, and lived out his life on the hidden planet of Exocron. Cardass would later be instrumental in the takedown of the imposter Flim and his Imperial backing. After the end of the Yujon Vong War in 29 ABY, the Jedi Knight Jason Solo would journey to the home of the Aang Ti. Although he learned much, the Aang Ti realized the darkness within him and came to view him as a flawed student. Years later, Luke Skywalker and his son Ben would travel to the Rift hoping to learn more about what caused Jason's fall to the dark side. But while the Aang Ti welcomed them with open arms, their visit proved ultimately inconclusive, prompting the two Skywalkers to leave soon thereafter. The Jedi Order is not the only organization to study and follow the Force. Countless schools have arisen among cultures that have the perception to hear the Force's call, from the Aang Ti to the Order of the Dai Bendu. I believe a lesson can be learned from this revelation, that in whatever way possible, in whatever circumstance imaginable, the Force will find a way.